can a hospital or a police station deny services based on a dress code on the 30th of january of this year a woman was involved in a car accident she went to the kajang police headquarters to report it she was clad in an above knee shorts the police turned her away on the 13th of february a woman had been playing badminton at kampa pera she experienced severe stomach pain she could barely walk clad in her sports shorts she was rushed to the kampa hospital again she was turned away because it was said it was impolite for her to wear such short shorts she returned home and had to change into trousers before she was admitted in both of these cases a dress code was cited as the reason for the denial of service both issues concerned government installations these two incidents attracted wide social media coverage the inspector general of police responding to these messages said that the public dress code had been based on a directive from the chief secretary to the government he pleaded higher authority he said the dress code could be relaxed based on the type of emergency faced by the complainant now is the chief secretary of the government entitled to issue dress codes and thereby unwittingly deny a person's right to service can government installations have a legal right to turn people away based on their dressing imagine these two situations suppose a woman has suffered a head injury in an accident she is rushed to the hospital clad only in her underclothes based on the kampa hospital directive that patient can be turned away because there is a need to be polite so the life of the person is not quite so crucial being polite is more important suppose an attempted rape has occurred the victim in a complete state of disarray and undress is rushed into a police station to report the incident can that lady be turned away you will note that both complaints relate to women what does the law say about that in 1995 malaysia ratified the convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women it is as you might have guessed an international treaty again there is an internationally accepted code of conduct for members of the police force called the law enforcement officials articles 1 and 2 of that code state law enforcement officials shall at all times fulfill their duties imposed by the law by serving the community and by protecting all persons against illegal acts again law enforcement officials shall respect and protect human dignity and uphold human rights of all persons there is a similar convention for medical professionals as you might know every doctor has to take the hippocratic oath the doctor swears that the health of my patient will be my first consideration it would be ridiculous don't you think to argue that my patient's dress code should be my first concern now let's look at the malaysian constitution article 8 clause 1 states that all persons are equal before the law and are entitled to equal protection of the law under article 5 1 the constitution states that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty save in accordance with the law now what do you think is the meaning of the phrase save in accordance with the law could a police station or a hospital say to a person who stand up before it under our rules you can't enter our installation unless you wear a decent dress now in 2010 in a case called sivarasa rasaya the malaysian federal court ruled that in accordance with the law meant that the law must be fair and just 
It doesn't denote a law that was arbitrary, capricious or unjust. Now, if a dress code was arbitrary or unjust in those circumstances, that would violate fundamental rights. Now, two questions arise from this legal proposition. One, can the government stop people from entering government installation based on a dress code? Two, is a government dress code within the constitution? Now, if what the IGP says is correct, that it was the chief secretary of the government who had made these laws and had granted these instructions, most government dress codes actually concern the civil service. For example, the government service circular number no. two of 1985 directs how civil servants and not all citizens must dress. Now, under the principle in the Sivarasa Rasaya case, is such a law fair or just? A law that prevents a patient from approaching a hospital or a law that prevents a member of the public from reporting a crime to the police station cannot be fair or just. Such directives offend the fundamental liberties in Articles 5 and 8 of the Constitution. Now, the Federal Court has also ruled on what is the meaning of the word life. Now, what has all this got to do with a woman who enters a police station or a hospital in a pair of shorts? It has to do with the concept of what life means. Several cases have ruled that the right to life in Article 5.1 was more than mere animal existence. One Indian Supreme Court judge Justice Bhagavati asked this question. Is the right to life limited only to protection of limb, of faculty, or does it go further? That judge explains it in this way. The right to life includes the right to live with human dignity and all that goes along with the concept of human dignity. Now, several Malaysian cases have accepted Justice Bhagavati's Proposition, it's now Malaysian law. Now, you will note that Bhagavati spoke about bare necessities of life. Are not police protection and medical assistance from a hospital bare necessities of life? If a hospital has rules that exclude that right, these rules do not give dignity to a member of the public. These dress codes are in breach of the federal constitution. Now, let's consider the concept of equality in Article 8. As a multicultural nation in Malaysia, there is a commingling of different communities. Its citizens are adherents to different creeds. What is accepted by one community as being correct could be discouraged in another. This creates difficulties and there are quiet tensions. In a case called Muhammad Juzaili, the Court of Appeal dealt with cross-dressing Muslim men. There the court dealt with the idea of constitutional equality. It ruled that a guarantee of equality meant that different people in different situations cannot be treated in the same way. Let's apply this test. If a person in one community thought wearing shorts was improper, that does not mean that every lady who dressed in shorts in another community was therefore improper, impolite, or worse, immoral. Now, some government departments have begun to make moral policing rules. This is based on their view of what is proper. Now, that may be appropriate for a place of worship, when such a dress code is extended to a government installation, everything changes. In a government installation set up to deal with emergencies, high standards of dressing do not apply and should not apply. If they do, they attack the fundamental liberties guaranteed by the federal constitution. In a government installation, a person is in need of assistance emergency assistance. It is illegal to deny that need no matter how that person is dressed. Now we are becoming more and more radicalized. 
moral policing is on the rise. We need to face these communal issues and speak about them openly and courteously. I hope I made the position clear. Goodbye and I'll see you again.